crafty friends it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have another video for the Newton Snook Designs August release and the stamp set that I'll be featuring today is called Hedgehog Hollow. There are four great stamp sets this month and this is the last day of the release so be sure to check out the link in the video description to join the blog hop and enter for your chance to win all the different stamp sets. Today might just be my favorite stamp set. I think these hedgehogs are so cute and the fact that one of the hedgehogs is sitting in a coffee cup is just perfect because I love cute critters and I love coffee. And since uh, many of you know that I love cute critters, you're probably already part of my Critter Lover Loving Paper Crafters group on Facebook, but if you're not, do check the video description for a link to that as well. I am starting today on some Tim Holtz watercolor paper because the Distress inks blend really well on the watercolor paper, and so I know they'll be a little bit more forgiving and work out well for this technique. I'm starting with picked raspberry, and I don't want to completely cover the base in picked raspberry. I want some variation, I want some dark spots and some light spots. So I'm basically just putting on a little bit everywhere. Like every piece, every bit of it has a very, very light coat of pink but I build up to darker layers in other areas because I'm going to do some masking and blending and I want to be able to get a couple of different colors, lighter and darker pinks and then mixing the blue in to get some areas that are purple, but then I want some areas to also be really dark blue so I'm going to barely touch them at all with the pink. And I just want to get a little bit of coverage everywhere and in order to control the ink, I am tapping it off on my work surface a little bit. I work on a grid mat and I don't change it in between every single project but it just helps to brighten things up when I make my videos so I do change it a little more often than if you worked with it um, just in your craft room. However, I do find it nice to have that paper to absorb the ink behind it because when you work with a craft sheet the ink sits on top of the craft sheet and as you move your panel around what you're going to find is that it starts to pick up the ink off of your sheet and um, when you blend between layers it's going to pick up the color and blend it on as you move to the next color. So if you ever find like you're getting bits of color that you don't expect it may be because the ink is sitting on your craft sheet and you're accidentally pulling it in. So once I get the pink looking the way that I like it I'm going to tape it down to my work surface and do some masking. I'm going to do some really simple masking. I bought the post-it label tape to create quick masks and to um, create straight lines on my project, but I thought it'd be really fun to give it a try of like making a pattern with the post-it tape. So I have two sizes, one sixteenth of an inch and the one inch. There are a couple other sizes. There's like a two inch size and like um, something in between, like maybe a half inch or something. But these were the two that I happened to have, you know, picked them up when placing a different Amazon order because they're usually like the add-on items and it's only a couple bucks. But I found that you could usually like pick them up at the grocery store too. So very accessible use of masking. And I'm just going to lay down a pattern. Um, if you wanted to create some thicker lines and you only had one of them or wanted to create thinner lines and only had one, you could either cut the sheet like on your paper trimmer or, uh, sorry, cut the tape on your paper trimmer or with the thinner ones you could just place them next to each other and build up a thicker line. So once I had a pattern I liked, I was ready to come in with the blue. I started with picked raspberry, now I'm using Mermaid Lagoon. I really love the way these two mix together. Mermaid Lagoon is probably my new favorite blue. Um, I'm actually not a big fan of blue, but I love turquoise, and um, yet Mermaid Lagoon has stolen my heart and made me love blue. So I don't want to cover everything in blue. Like I said before, I want some areas to be purple, some areas to be blue, and some areas to be pink. But I'm only going to use the two colors, and I also want like some light blues and dark blues, and that's what's really nice about Distress Inks is that you can get so many different colors from just one pad. The post-it note paper is not going to absorb the ink very quickly, so that blue ink that's sitting on there is kind of like active in the sense that it can be pulled off the paper, and so if you put your fingers in it, it's going to get your fingers all inky, and um, you might want to just take that into consideration of just if you're if you put your hands on the post-it paper and then you go to 
hold down another piece of your cardstock, you might get a fingerprint, a blue fingerprint. That's why I taped mine down so that I didn't really have to worry about that. Then I'm going to pull up all of the different strips and reveal the design underneath. And I like the way that it looked, but you could continue to do more layers if you want as well. Um, but I was happy with how it turned out. So now I'm going to be coloring my image from the Hedgehog Hollow stamp set. I'm using Prismacolor pencils, and as you can imagine, I cannot color that fast, and this is quite a bit sped up. I'm never sure how much coloring to include in a video. I don't know how much people like to watch that. Personally, when I watch videos, I don't usually watch all of the coloring unless they're like sharing tips while they're coloring. When they play music, I kind of just skip that part. So I was kind of wondering, what do you guys prefer? Um, usually I just talk through my coloring or don't include it because I want to make sure that it's like a useful part of the video um, and nobody's just like skipping through wishing I would just shut up and move on. Um, so when I'm doing the coloring today, I'm keeping a really sharp pencil because I find that an easier way to blend. And at first I was trying to stay inside the lines and then I realized like why I'm fussy cutting this out. Um, so I find that sometimes coloring outside of the lines on the edges makes it a little bit easier to get a deep shadow. Um, on the very edges. So if you know you're going to fussy, fussy cut something out, sometimes you can save some time by not worrying as much about it. Um, but I think it's kind of our natural inclination to color in the lines because they tell you to do that at school. Um, so, you know, here I am obeying that social convention. And I start with this really light base layer and start building up color from the sides, applying more pressure as I go, because as I am to the final layer, and I know that that's definitely where I want to stop, um, I, I'm willing to apply more pressure. Because if you apply a lot of pressure at the beginning, it's a little bit harder to build up layers of color in my experience. And so I don't want to apply that really dark pressure that gives you um, the blended look or the um, darker look, because I want to be able to build up. But then when I'm sure that I'm finished with the coloring, I can go back and add that because I do find a little bit of pressure helps the colors blend. I think that there's lots of ways to color and other people might have different suggestions for how to get the colors to blend, but that's what I generally tend to do. And here I want the cup to have a rounded effect. So as I've mentioned many times, the easiest way to do that is to add a little bit of um, darker on the left and right side so that you create a highlight down the center. This is not going to be part of a scene, so I'm not going to worry about a specific light source. I'm just going to add some interest. So like with the hedgehog, I'm going to add the drop shadow behind his head, and I'm not going to worry about anything else because he doesn't have a light source. And I'm trying to pull in all of the colors from my background. Since I knew that I would probably be putting this coffee cup on that large pink strip, that I created in the center, I decided I would make it purple so that it would kind of pop off the pink. I didn't want any of the pink at the edges, but I did accent them with the heart there. So I am ready to color the hedgehog and I'm going to just pick a bunch of browns. I find that with the Prismacolor pencils, I don't actually use my color swatch very often. I kind of just eyeball it and like what colors look like they go together and it doesn't always work. Sometimes I get colors that are like some of the pencils are a little bit different than the actual color that comes out of them, but it does a pretty good job. I find it to be at least better than my Copics. Sometimes the Copic lids are very, very different than the color that comes out, and so I find a Copic chart a little bit more helpful. But with these Prismacolor pencils, I kind of just grab a couple browns that look good together. I don't worry about what number or color or anything that they are. And Again, I'm just going to build that layer. I took the lightest brown color that I pulled out and I just covered all parts of the hedgehog and then I'm starting to build up the layers. But there's going to be the little spikes in the hedgehog and I'm going to kind of complete those as a last step. What I like about the Prismacolor pencils is coloring critters because you see the pencil lines with the Prismacolor pencils, at least the way that I color. You can blend out the pencil lines a little bit if that's what you prefer by taking a colored pencil blender pen um, or a blender pencil and it kind of helps smooth things out. But 
that's not what I want. So I'm not going to do that. And once I have all of my general coloring finished, I'm going to go in and add some strong dark strokes to look specifically more like fur or in this case quills. So I want those really clear, distinct pencil lines. And you can do a similar look with Copic markers too, just creating those distinct lines at the end that add in some texture. But I'd like the softer look of colored pencils, and I thought especially in this case it paired well with the soft look of the Distress Ink that I got by adding um, different amounts of, of the Distress Ink. So I fussy cut him out, and a tip for fussy cutting handles like that, just cut right through the handle. And then when you glue it down, you actually can't notice that it was cut through. So I just kind of like cut off the handle and then glue it back together and you don't ever notice. And this is a technique that I used a lot when I first started crafting, but I wanted just like a little something extra. And so I decided to draw in some faux stitching lines. And that was like all the rage um, a couple years ago and I haven't seen it done much. But it does add a little extra detail, kind of like the stitched dies that are available now. Um, but since I'd already taped down my panel, I couldn't put a stitched die and just decided to add those stitching lines myself. So that is it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And I will leave you links to all of the products in the video description below, as well as to the blog hop where you can enter to win this stamp set. Thanks for watching. Bye.